I'm wondering if there's any um, last pieces that are still on our minds that we'd like to bring forward. How, how does one start the practice of circle in their building? I see it starting, I see circles starting anywhere. I think we, we know that this is, as humans, who we want to be. We are relational creatures. And so our role is to facilitate the container for us to practice being in relationship. Um, and so that can look like um, a circle in the staff room as a way to process what the beginning of the year feels like after coming back from a long time off. It could look like a um, icebreaker in your, in your classroom where you encourage story sharing or you encourage folks to share what type of weather they feel like today. Um, it could look like uh, in inviting different stakeholders in the building who are not usually together um, but all have a common stake in the well-being and success of the students to be in circle together and to discuss things that relate to all their work. I also think that there's a real importance for having reverence to this work um, and recognizing where this work comes from, that this is grounded in indigenous practice and that for me as a white person, uh, facilitating a restorative circle or a talking circle, that this, is, this, this does not come from my culture. And so I want to be using the wisdom and um, centering the wisdom of those who have a lot of depth in this work. And so I think about that as we encourage training and as we encourage um, um, taking on the charge of, of moving this into your classroom is recognizing that this has a long history. This isn't a recent invention. Yeah. It is our duty to understand the, an equitable conversation also means that we must be dismantling systemic injustices that occur for also individual people in that circle. Mm -hmm. And so we cannot separate the work of restorative justice or talking circles from our fight to dismantle racism and our fight to dismantle gender-based oppression um, in our schools and in ourselves. I'm glad that you brought forward some of those issues because I think as my own guards and uh, you know, I, I live in that world of race and equity and I'm in this district in part because as a district we've made a commitment with our policy 0030 to race and equity and to um, addressing those issues as they impact students and as they impact us as staff as well. So when I think about circle practice and how to get it started, um, it's, a, it's a place where this is about becoming a better human as well as a commitment to what we want schools to look like for kids and how do we make them stronger humans. What I love inherently about circle is that wherever you are and who you are as a human, you step into circle is valued for that. Mm -hmm. There's no questioning about who you are. It's not about that you need to become a better human being for someone else. This is about self work and understanding that if we are going to teach children and model, we need to model our best selves in that as well. Um, so that we can allow them to grow. Zaretta Hammond talks about that in order to ask kids to learn with depth, we have to have their permission. And this is a way to get that permission to find depth and to show depth within us. So when I think about starting circle, first thing you have to do is start identifying circles that you feel belonging in. Mm -hmm. Start practicing. Um, and if you're in a building that maybe doesn't have as much of the identity safety or the race equity safety that you have, find those people you do belong with. Start a circle there. Um, the other thing I would say is that it's 
starts, circle also starts with intentionality. Um, and, and not everybody knows how to facilitate a circle or is ready to facilitate a circle. So don't set yourself up for failure in this because um, it takes practice. It takes a willingness to be here and decide, like, why am I here? How much am I willing to give right now? And how much do I need to hear to get to a place of feeling that this is a safe circle. And if you run into a circle that's not safe, it, it, you'll feel walls come up. You might see it with other people in circles as walls come up and keep practicing because you won't understand how to, how to problem solve that within yourself or facilitate that until you practice. Um, and I just want to make clear that although I have my cultural training in this and my, my cultural space and growing up with this and understanding it, like if I don't continue to participate in circles, I make for a bad facilitator. Mm -hmm. And you get a lot from just participating. Yeah. So it's a growing practice as all things are. Yeah, I think it's like you said, I mean, you start, you start with yourself. Um, and it's weird because circle is this communal practice, so it may sound odd to be like, you start with yourself, but really you start asking yourself some, some self-discovery, some, some questions um, that are deeper than you normally ask yourself. And then maybe, yeah, you go to the people that you feel safest with and you practice. So maybe that's just your friends or your closest colleagues in the building. Um, like I said, at our school, it just started with a couple people who really believed in it, who had gone to a circle and um, felt a little revolution in their heart and so wanted to bring it back to the kids. And uh, yeah, it just started with volunteer circles. And after a year of that, it really grew into um, a common practice where we have three staff meetings a year that are in circle formation. Um, and now we have a cohort of youth circle keepers who you know, will hopefully be, be the ones leading our circles this year. Um, so you just, you just kind of start. You know, you start with your your trusted small circle, and eventually that circle gets gets a little bit bigger. Um, I also understand that each building should have somebody um, that went to some kind of training. So maybe talk to the people in your building that already have an interest with this and collaborate with them. Wonderful. Um, I like to always close a circle with a breath as a way to reground in our bodies. 